Okay, um, hello everyone. All right, so the next program in chapter six is retail item class. Okay, so write a class named retail item that holds data about an item in a retail store. The class should have the following field, description. The description field references a string object that holds a brief description of the item. Units on hand. The units on hand field is an int variable that holds the number of units currently in inventory. Price. The price field is a double that holds the item's retail price. Write a constructor that accepts arguments for each field. Appropriate mutator, uh, mutator methods that store values in these fields. And accessor methods that, re that return the values in these fields. Once you have written the class, write a separate method, uh, write a separate program that creates three retail item objects and stores the value data in them. Okay. So we're going to create a class. We're going to create a retail, retail item class, create, create three retail item objects from it. And then we're going to set values, the values of these objects. Okay, basically the fields of these objects and then display them. Although the program didn't say we should display them. It said we should set the values, but we will display them as well. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and create a class in this file and then the program in another file. As long as they are both in the same folder they should be able to access each other when you compile it because they're both in the same folder they should both find each other they, it should it should compile and it should run okay so let's go ahead and create the class so i'm first going to start with the keyword public class and i'm going to call it retail item because that's what the program said we should call it so retail retail item public because I want this class to be available to code outside of this class or basically code on a different page basically code uh, code code that is not part of this class I want this class to be able to be available to it that's why I'm using the keyword public all right so now I'm going to go ahead and define the fields of this class and we've it's been told like we've, we, we, you know we've, we've been told here the first field is, is, is the description field the description field references a string object that holds a brief description of the item. So we know it's a string, right? So I'm going to define it as a private variable, right? Private because I want this variable to be hidden or not to be accessible by any, any code that is outside of this class. I only want code that is part of this class to be able to access this field. Code, code that is outside this class, I don't want it to be able to directly see the content of this variable or change the content of this variable. I want code outside of this class to be able to use public methods that we are yet to define in this class to be able to, 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 be able to change the content of these fields or see the content of these fields. We'll get to that. But I'm hiding the content and restricting access only, only to content in this class. Okay, in other words, only content of this class will be able to see and change. Um, sorry, yeah, only code in this class will be able to see and change these fields directly. Anything outside of this class, they wouldn't be direct. They wouldn't be able to directly see the content of this class or change the contents. They would have to use public methods in this class that we are about to create to access them. But you know, of course, this, this, this. Yeah, once we create the code, it will make more sense. But for now, I'm just hiding these variables. So private, and then I'm going to call it, well, first of all, we have to define a type. So private string, we've been told it's a string over here. I'm going to go out and call it description. So private string description, that's the first one. The other one is also good. They're all going to be private variables. So private units on hand is, a, is an int. It's an int variable that holds the number of units currently in, in the inventory. So private int, I'm going to go out and call this units on hand because that's what's in the book and the third one is going to be price so private double right because over here it says the price field is a double that holds the items retail price so private double I'm going to go ahead and call it price all right so now we are done with the fields of this class it says write a constructor that accepts arguments for each field right so let's let's just do that write a constructor th that accepts arguments for these uh, for each field so let's go ahead and define a constructor that's going to basically initialize these fields or set give them initial values construct help construct the class all right so it's going to be a public so a constructor is going to be like a regular method 
so it's going to be public because I want the constructor to be available to code because once you start creating an object from this class you want you want you want code outside of the class to be able to to create objects from this class so you want to you want them to use the constructor and that's why you're making the constructor public okay so public the constructor doesn't have any return type because we are not explicitly calling these constructors the, these constructors are called anytime we try to create an object from the class and because of that and because we don't we are not the ones calling it directly uh, because because we are not the ones here calling it directly they can't re they, they can't return a value so because of that we don't specify return types okay and also they don't have the keyword static okay in this case we're not going to add a keyword static so it's just going to be public and then the name of the constructor now the name of the constructor has to be has to be the same as the name of the class in this case the name of the class is retail item the name of the constructor is also going to be retail item so public retail item no static keyword and then no return type it's going to be a regular method so we have our parentheses now over here it said create write a constructor that accepts arguments for each field so we know that it's going to be accept accept arguments so we have to go ahead and define parameters for the for the argument or define parameters so and basically the parameters that the, or the, the arguments that the person or the, whoever is creating this object is going to pass in here are the values that, you know that are going to replace these fields or set initial initialize these fields when an object is created from this class so you will need arguments for, to replace all these to or to initialize these three fields so the first one is going to be description description is the string so it will need a string and I'm going to call this parameter description given. Okay. And then the next one I'm going to call it int unit on hand given. And then the last one is going to be double price given. These values are going to be given by whoever uses this constructor to, to create an object from this class. And these values are going to initialize the field of that particular object that we just created from this class. So when these values are given, what we want to do in the constructor is we want to set the field of that particular object to be equal to, you know, what what values respectively. So for example, description is going to be set to description given, and then units on hand is going to be set to units on hand given, and then price. Oops, price is going to be set to the price that was passed in as an argument to this constructor, which is a regular method. Okay, but but kind of special, kind of different because it doesn't have a return type and then no static keyword, just public retail item. The same the same name as a class. Okay, now let's move on. It says write a constructor. We've done that. Appropriate mutator methods that store values in these fields. So mutator me methods are going to be our setters. Okay, they're going to be our methods that are going to set values, set set values of these fields. Okay, give values to these fields. They're going to set set the values, and then before they set the values, they'll need the new value that they want to set it to, and that that new value is going to be basically values that are passed in as an argument when this method is called. So be, um, over here, I'm going to go ahead and define or, or create my setters or mutators. I like my constructors as a last thing in the class, so that's why I've. So I'm I'm going to basically define the mutators above it, and my constructor will be the last thing in the class because I like my mine like that. Okay. Um. So the first mutator I'm the mutator I'm going to create is for the description field to be able to set the, the to set the value. Okay, set the value of the description field. So I'm going to. Um, create a method. It's going to be a regular method. I want to. I want it to be public because code outside this class is going to use this method to set the fields of these instead of directly setting the fields of these. Okay, instead of instead of them saying, "Oh, description is equal to that," they would have to use this method to be able to set the description value. Okay, so public. Now the mutators, they you know we call them directly, so they have they have a return type. So they can return something, so we have to specify the return return type, right? So Okay, we, yeah, we have, we have to specify the return type, but then they don't have the keyword static. Okay, see, like when we create a regular method, we have public static void, public public static doubles, and stuff like that. But with this one, we don't specify or we don't type in the keyword static because it's an instance method. Okay, 
instance methods are methods that directly work on the field of a particular object object created from this class okay instance methods work they are they are methods that work directly on fields okay of an object that is created directly from this class because in this case we're going to create a setter or, or mutator method that's going to set the value of description it is working on a field of an object that is going to be created from this class because of that it's a it's an instance method and with instance methods just know that it doesn't have the keyword static for now just know that instance methods don't have the keyword static once we get to chapter 8 once we move forward and maybe to, yeah to chapter 8 more about uh, classes we will just we will discuss it but for now just put in your head that instance methods don't have the keyword static okay so it just has a return type and then the name of the method so in this case um we are only setting the value of description we are not really returning anything so it's returning nothing and when when a method is returning nothing we specify that it's returning void okay the, the return type is going to be void void means nothing it's returning nothing so public void i'm going to call this set description so this method is going to set the value of a description so set description it's going to it's going to be a regular method so i'm going to put my parentheses but we it's going to accept an argument because we, we are setting that we are setting the description field to a new value so it will need that new value so the new the new value is going to be an argument that the that whoever is calling this method has to provide so i'm going to define a parameter for that so since description is a string i'm going to define that parameter as a string and i'm going to call it probably user description all right user description and then once this value has been given or passed into this function when it's called or this this method when it's called i want to set the description field to the user description all right so that's it for the set description okay we're going to do the same thing for user sorry yes yeah, so for, for you for units on hand and then for price let's start with um units on hand let's continue with units on hand so set i want to call it set units on hand it's not returning anything so we set return type to void so sets units on hand it's going to take the user units on hand and it's going to set the units on hand field to um to to the user units on hand field that was passed to this or that's that is going to be passed to this function or sorry to this method when it's called right so user units uh, sorry units on hand is going to be called to user units on hand okay now the last one is going to be set price okay so i'm going to first of all set it to set price if it returns nothing so it returns void which means nothing okay so set price oops oops i made a mistake um units on hand uh, it's is an integer so we would have to define an integer parameter okay for 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 units on hand it's a number okay so so the user, the user is going to pass and whoever is calling this method is going to pass in a number and so we have to define an, an integer field for that. I mean, an integer par, um, parameter for that, all right? Not a string. Although we can define it, we can make it a string and then later on convert that value in the function to an integer. Let's just, let's just do this. Let's just stick with the original stuff. And then later on, we can accommodate for all the things. But let's just stick with the question and be, be focused on the question. Okay. So for set price, set price is a double. So we'd have to define a double parameter for that call it user price and we, what we want to do is set the price field to the user price that is going to be given to this method when it's called so now we're done with our mutators over here it, it says also write appropriate mutator method sorry which we've done that here mutator methods so all these are mutator methods or, or setters it also says over here an accessor method that return the values in these fields. Accessor methods are basically going to get the values of these fields and return them. Okay, so now code outside this class has to be has to use these public methods that we are defining here to be able to set the values and to be able to see the values in them. So they can just, just say they can just say 
description is equal to something. They can't just directly set it, or they can't just say system allowed to print description. You'd have to say if they wanted to set the va value for of description, you'd you'd have to say the name of the object dot set description, and then that's that's the only way they can set set this set this description. If they wanted to see, they would have to use the accesses we're about to create here. All right, but you'd have to start with the name of the object dot get description or something. Well, that's the first thing we're going to create. We're going to go ahead and create the get description accessor or or get or getter. Okay, so it's also going. To, it's also an instance method, just like these. No static keyword. It has a return type though. So I'm going to call this public. But guess what? We are getting the value. We want to return the value to whoever called this or um, basically yeah, whoever called this method, right? So we want to return that value to that person. We want to get to the description over here and return it to that person so the person can see it. So, I mean, when I say the person can see it, I mean whoever is writing code in main in the different program to access this class or to use this class, that's what I'm referring to. It, could, it can be me. It basically, it's going to be me actually. But then um, this class is going to be written and then we're going to write a program that's going to use this class. Okay. So, so yes, that's what I mean. All right. So for the getter or for the first accessor, we want to first access the, f the value in description. So public, since we want to return it, we want to return a string to the user. We want to set the return type to be a, st to be a string. So public string, we're going to call it get description. Again, no, is no, no static keyword. So public string get description. It's going to be a regular method. So my parentheses are there. It's not going to accept any um, any arguments, okay? So we are not going to define any parameter for it. All it's doing is it's getting the value of description and returning it, okay? So once this method is called, all what what we want to do is we want to return the description. That's all. So that's we you know we are returning a string, so we want to go ahead and return description, which is a string. So we're done with the first one. The second one we want to do is basically get the units on hand. And then once this method is called, we want to go ahead and return units on units on hand. And then the last accessor or getter is we want to get the price. So I'm going to go ahead and call this get price. And once this method is called, we want to go ahead and return the price. Okay, so now we're done with the constructor the fields of the class, the mutators, and then the accesses. So we're done with all of that. Okay, so we've done accessor methods over here. Once you have written the class, write a separate program that creates three retail item objects and stores the, fo the following data in them. So now we're done with the class, so we have to write, a co we have to write code that is outside of this class, a separate program, that is going to use this class to create object and then set values of the fields of these objects or display values of the fields of this object. So now let's go ahead and save this as um, take back to oops that's different. Let's see. Uh, let's see Java. Okay, so let's save it here. Chapter six, create a new folder for it, call it retail item, retail item class, retail, retail item class. It's supposed to click, yes, all right. And save this here. All right, so do you have any errors? Compile this. Okay, we have a couple of errors, let's see. Incompatible types found int. Okay, oh, yes, yes, yes. Because I copied and paste, pasted these, I made errors. Okay, so for the get description, we know that it's a string, so we want to go ahead and return a string. Get units on hand, we know that it's an int, so we have to return an int instead of a string. And then get price, we know it's a double, so we have to return a double instead of a string. So let's compile this, and then we're fine. So now let's create a new file create a new program that is going to use this class. As long as they are in the same folder, when you compile it, they, sh they should see each other. They should be able to work with each other. Okay.